what something that drives me nuts that people do so if you're listening please fix it uh, if you have a graphic and it's just nothing but word or your website nothing but words and it's not broken up in any way by bullet points it's just one big fat paragraph oh a graphic like on on what a website on, on or social media or on a post like or something yeah. mm-hmm. <clears throat> i can't stand because i also have adhd so i'm like you lost me after two seconds what's an example of that of what you're talking about like what do a you mean? A lot of words on something. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know, like what you mean. But what instance do people do that typically that you find that you're like, Jesus, will you stop doing this? Ooh. Is it like a client referral sort of like this? So is, <clears throat> or I've seen referral, it a little but... bit different ways. So a great example is one of my clients, and the reason I can say it's one of him because we actually fixed it. So when he was doing open house postings, um, <clears throat> he would have like the photos, say an open house, and then there would be a big fat paragraph of what it was. Kaylee Bain. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we had a little bit of, uh, it was a fun one. Try to get this set up <laughs> for like 20 minutes. Sorry. It's fine. While you were filming me and laughing. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. Kaylee, you are a small business owner. Yes. And you do, you have a very unique business. Why don't you do me a favor and just tell the listeners what you do, who you are, and what you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So what do I do? And what I do? So what I do is uh, social media marketing. So I work with uh, real estate agents, small business owners, and I help them think of unique and out of the box ways to market themselves. And then recently I've been getting more into teaching. So I did like a whole, what I do? The, the workshop. The workshop. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a long week. How many agents were there? Uh, I think about 40. Really? Give or take. There was... I mean, at our first one, plus we, at the first one, yeah, yeah, the first one had to be like close to sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which that was fun. Yeah, this was more. I mean, a lot of people don't. I mean, a lot of them were kind of like not sure if they want to do reels and if they even care to do reels. So the ones that were there were like, please help. Yeah. Which was kind of cool. So that was really like there was people I thought knew how to do reels and they had absolutely no idea what they were doing. So that was cool. Yeah. So social media marketing, workshopping with a bunch of real estate agents and teaching and event planning too, you've been getting into a lot of. Right. Yeah. I just started that a couple months ago. Yeah. So a whole lot of interesting things here. Um, I have a slew of questions here for you, <laughs> but I don't want to, I'm not going to make this like a technical, like what is the <laughs> optimal time of day to post? <laughs> okay. I don't want, I'm not going to be, we're not going to be covering that here today. Okay. Um, what, if any, information do you have about how beneficial is it for an agent or a small business to even be using social media? Like, I don't even know if this information would be accessible yet, but is there like a noticeable difference between those who are able to capture business on social media and those who just ignore it and don't do it? Yeah, so I mean, the people who aren't utilizing social media at all, are they're missing a huge clientele. Because I mean, our generation, like we're in the you know late 20s early 30s generation but all the people that are like just getting out of college like you're missing all of those people you're missing anyone in their third like you're missing so many people because the the main demographic on social media right now is anywhere from about 18 to 35 and those are like your new home buyers you know you have a lot of veterans too so you have your va loan people you have so many people you're missing out on yeah so i mean if you're not on social media you're missing a huge chunk of people and then again, that's just a chunk of people that you can have their business too. Because mm-hmm. I mean, one of my clients is actually a small business. It's a wedding planning, or I'm um, sorry, a wedding venue. Right. And they you just, just got. Them up, right? Yes, I did. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been with them for about a month now, and I've been, you know, slamming them out with new posts and. Yeah. yeah. And you said that they just got their. their they got first their client first from, inquiry. I yeah. saw that post that you had. I know. I'm so excited about it. That's I was like, cool. so you see that, right? <laughs> so for a wedding to do a wedding there, mm-hmm. or. It was a 150 person wedding. That's pretty cool. And Which, that's a big ticket sale too. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. that venue fits, I mean the max amount of people they'll take or will take is 230 and 200 is like pushing it, but like 150, 175, like that's a good, perfect size wedding for that place. How beneficial it is, is it for like who needs a social media manager? per se so many people we were so. just talking about a guy who does a whole i'm not gonna mention his name but <laughs> yeah. he does a whole so many views on youtube yeah Fifteen thousand subscribers mm-hmm. doesn't do a damn thing on <laughs> Absolutely anything 100 nothing. subscribers or followers on instagram 
Yeah. He's probably one of them. But, like, who, who could use it? Who doesn't need it? Who could use it? So, I mean, the people that don't need it are the ones who actually have time to do it and care to do it. But, I mean, everyone, I feel like everyone needs it. So, you know, I, I like to help the people, you know, who have no idea what the hell they're doing. They're like, just take it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't care to learn because I teach people. And then a lot of the people that I end up taking on are the ones who say, I don't care to learn. Just take it. Do it. So I, I take really? the Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Half the people that take my classes, they're just there to, like, see what I do. And then they tell me they don't want to do it. And they rather just me do it. So I was like, okay. So cool. So you have those people. Then you have the people that just don't have time. Um, so I try to help people, you know, like, your time should be spent, you know, making money not trying to waste time doing all this crap when you can just put that off on someone else and you can be spending more time making calls, going out and talking to people, showing houses, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think really any of those two, the ones who don't care to do it and the ones who just don't care to learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and that's, I think that's important too because there's, I don't know. Well, I've seen at least real estate agents in the past year that put – a lot of effort and energy into social media work and I don't know what else they're doing mm -hmm. regarding the door knocking the regulars to the open houses the other, you know the other stuff so there's like this balance that there has to be and if you're just so busy that you can't do social media stuff like yeah you need a manager to do it, do it obviously but mm -hmm. also it's like the business that that we're in as agents loan officers it's like we need to continuously doing business so that we can do business tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But mm -hmm. social media stuff is not like, do you think that it's like how short term versus long term is it? Because in my mind, it's like, okay, well, I'm probably not going to see anything noticeable within probably the next couple of years, even from the stuff that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Granted, I do things very inconsistently <laughs> and I'm horrible at being consistent. I've been posted in three months uh -huh. one of these podcasts. It's okay. We're coming back. We're working on it. <laughs> working um, on. But how like how short to long term is it for like a real estate agent? So what I tell everyone, like, so I have contracts, obviously. So with the contracts, I tell everyone they should be doing at least six, at least six month contracts because in three months you start to see somewhat of a trend and in, also in three months you start seeing, you know, what's working and what is just not working like the ones that are getting no views versus the ones you are getting views on so like something i do is i look at everyone's analytical report so i go over the insights i see what's working what's not what people are paying attention to and what they're not doing and so then if it's not working obviously i'm going to change the game plan um so i tell everyone you'll probably start seeing things in at least six to twelve months maybe yeah um, but again like i i work with small business and realtors so realtors are a lot of them right now and you know a lot of them are doing the same thing so what I'm trying to do is help them not do what other people are doing so I'm kind of taking different approaches at it yeah and so I mean some of them have been getting calls and then some of them may have not been getting calls it really depends on what and it's also if they're listening to what I'm telling them to do is the whole other thing that's a whole <laughs> other thing that no just one ever listen listens to, to it's like if you're gonna hire someone just listen to them if I say share it to your page yeah I mean it I mean go share it to your page don't not do it <laughs> so yeah yeah i feel like that's a pretty good six six months to a year because i mean if, if you were consistent at it it's reasonable so, yeah 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 i tell people like at least three to four posts a week too and if you're not posting you three better, four a week yes wow. and if you're not posting on your actual posts like content wise like you should be on your stories Post, at least. yeah stories are easy I mean I oh, yeah, granted, so you like do my stories stuff. all the time yeah yeah, yeah. they're easy because I'll just repost other people's stuff but you're also post like reposting like really pretty stuff I do like post all my pretty, like my dream houses stuff. that's what you're posting I like those houses I used to uh -huh. make my house videos too but yeah yeah your house videos are great those are easy I had a time too where I was doing I was trying to do a post a day and then I had like a week where I did two posts a day and I burnt out of that yeah you burned quickly so quickly Mostly, I think, because I was just trying to start doing it and get into it, and and uh, I just got really bored of it. I was like, my God, I'm bored of this. Yes. I would, I'm, how, why would I expect somebody else to watch any of this if I, myself, am just bored to tears with it? Mm -hmm. Like, I was doing those, like, market update videos, you know, all that good stuff. So, that's why I'm just like, I'm just going to do the podcast and mm -hmm. try to salvage some clips from it or something and do that. Yeah, not smart. I yeah. mean, I get bored doing my own stuff, too. Like, I'm finally coming back. Like, I like doing my clients' work. Like, that's fun for me. Yeah. But when I come to do my Why? own things. it's like changes it up? Or? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I used to do marketing and social media for years since I owned my own business. And I've always done it for one company at a time. 
So I was just doing it for that company. I never really did it for multiple companies. Yeah. And I got bored as hell, especially the last one I was with. We had 10, co- like we were small business, but we had 10 stores, all the same stores, 10 different locations. And that's when I started learning like, okay, like I'm really good at doing multiple accounts, but I'm bored of doing the same thing. Hmm. So that's why I like having multiple different accounts. Like great, I have, I have six clients right now, and I want to say four of them are realtors, and the other two are just small businesses, so it's different. Yeah. And each person's different. What they all offer is different. What they have is different. So it's cool. But when it comes to my stuff, I'm just kind of like, mm, okay, this is nice. Yeah. And I, and I love posts. I love teaching people. But I'm so focused on making sure all my clients are good that I sometimes forget about my own stuff. So that's where I'm working on batching all my content. Batching. Yeah. So, what is that? <laughs> so what is I come up with all these ideas of what I want to post. Like in my phone, I have a whole note, it scrolls forever, and I have little check marks next to it. So when I come up with an idea when I'm driving, I go to my note and I put the idea in there. And then I'll go back later. And so I have a whole note full of these ideas. So then what I'll do when I go to batch is make all the content. So whether I'm making reels, carousel, static posts, all those things, I have them all made and then I schedule them all out for a couple weeks. Okay, okay, I see, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like right now, yeah. I'm doing all those reels I told you about. I have like four right. reels I'm making. Yeah, well that's what you did when you went to Cary and you were mm-hmm. filming all that content for that team that you that you work with now and yeah. them afterwards, now we see the posts. Yeah, yeah, I did that like a week, mm-hmm. two weeks ago now? Yeah. I forget. That's I kind of what I, I want to do with this yeah. podcast, you know? Yeah. It's like oh, no, it's goal. smart. It's just do the podcast, and then from there, all the other stuff is fairly mm-hmm. fairly easy, I think. I don't know. Yeah. What is, what's the ideal relationship that with the consumer that someone who is either a real estate agent or a small business have with the you know consumer of that content? What's the relationship of them versus person who's watching it what's yeah um, like what's yeah, yeah, yeah so it's a little bit different no, 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 for, not versus it but like what what do you want how do you i guess how do you want people to because you primarily work with real estate agents that are obviously local and then small businesses that are obviously local too so what is it what is the goal i guess other than just getting business like what do you, what do you want out of that relationship with the consumer educating educating yes educating on your expertise or the product that you have or your so, service so a little bit of everything so like uh so the wedding venue i have for example mm-hmm. educating them on the trends of you know what is the trend of the season what's the color of the season what's a great place you should be looking for if you're looking for a certain aesthetic where do you find it and being very like brutally honest about it but also like so say a realtor so um so some of my realtors they're like masters in new construction so educating people like if you're getting a new construction home what are the things to look for what are the things to ask about <laughs> i was wondering why you're so i felt very tall you, i mean you I are feel tall. really short now actually no it's okay you can stay there <laughs> i'm sorry what were you saying i don't even remember um but yeah educating so um new construction and so then, like, another thing I tell people, I'm like, you got to teach people about the area you live in. Because if you want them to l- l- like move there, if you want to sell them something there, like, you need to educate them what's in the area. So educating people on if you have a family, where's the best places to bring your kids? If you have dogs, where's the best places to go on walks? Where are the best places to go bring your dog for a groom? Where's the best places to go X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. So whether you're educating them on actual things or the area... I want people to learn that from their content. Why do both? Like, why do both of those things? Why? Because, I mean, the people... Because <laughs> it's just good? It's good. It gives you good content. But also, um, a lot of it's also giving shout-outs to local businesses. And that's my mission in my business is to support local, love local, spread the word about local. So I instill that in my clients. And I tell them pretty much straight off the bat. I'm like, if you're going to work with me, you're going to support a local business of your choice whether it be one or multiple, but I highly suggest like, if you want to work with me, that's how I work. And every single client I've ever even told that to, they said yes instantly. So when you're educating people, you're also throwing in like, oh, like, did you know in this area there is, I'm going to bring it to beer now. So in this area, if you're looking for like a really good brew spot to bring your spouse or your your uh, partner or whoever, like this is a great spot to go to. Mm-hmm. And then you're giving shout outs of all these local places in downtown Cary, let's say. So like Bomb Brothers, The Walk Up, Esteemed Coffee, 
all those places. Like you're giving shout outs to local business. So educating them in the place and then you're also giving a local shout out and then they're gonna like it, so then they're gonna share your stuff. And then the so, business, yeah. So yeah, like Bomb yeah. Brothers, like that's my my go to place. Some of these places have like, doesn't the, like some of these places have like ridiculous amounts of like followers. Like yeah. Fiction Coffee, I think when I looked it up when I went there, mm. just cause I think I was tagging them in a picture <laughs> yeah. that I took. Uh huh. They had like fifteen thousand. I think there's a lot of other Fiction Coffees, but still, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, I mean, bon, like I go back to Bomb Brothers and Esteem because I work with them a lot and stuff. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of followers. So anytime I share something, they share it. And then I see my reach like skyrocket. So those are always kind of like li- super easy and it's free. Is the goal <laughs> to have just as many people following you as possible? No. What's the goal? Educating people. I'm always going to bring it back to educating people. And then if you get followers from that, I mean, you're going to get followers from that because people want to learn more. People are on social media to learn things. Yeah. But I guess so like... Educating is the action that you do for what greater end? Oh my gosh. Um, so. We're drilling in. Now you're drilling me. No, I guess the, <laughs> so the reason that I asked you is because I feel like there's, there's some people that will do social media like that locally, mm-hmm. just immersing themselves in a community with people that are in their profession and it just kind of solidifies. So Instagram is like one of the biggest networking tools that I use on a daily basis. It's yeah. insane. Like LinkedIn, <laughs> it's it's 10 times better than LinkedIn. Yeah. I feel like LinkedIn is just overused now too and it's just it weird. Is. I get There's so many like, spam messages on it. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm not, I'm honestly not on it. Like I want to be a fan of LinkedIn, but honestly, there's so many bots. Like I'm on it, but that doesn't mean I'm like, all in with it like I'm all about Facebook and Instagram like that's where everyone is right now I mean the statistics are like Instagram is I think like it's like third or fourth and Facebook's like second like one or second either way like they're up there they're above in what total like user count is that what you're talking about or mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it's like rank so there's like YouTube Facebook can't remember that third one then it's Instagram and TikTok? Then like, yeah, TikTok's in there how would you forget TikTok I've I want to forget TikTok, but I'm I'm on it all the time. But um, I mean, there's just so, I mean, people are on social media to learn, but also for edu- um, not educating um, entertainment. Like people want to oh, see yeah. all the funny stuff, but you can also like something I was teaching the realtors the other day. I was doing reels, and I'm like you can be funny teaching people about houses. It doesn't have to be super boring. Yeah. If it's boring, I don't watch it anyway. So that means a lot of other people are going to watch it. Yeah. So it's just trying to make people think of other clever ways of, oh, you want to buy this house? Let me show you why. Yeah. And instead of saying that, like, show them, like, the bathroom. Like, I love bathrooms and kitchens because I love making a lot of food. And so it's like, if I'm getting a place, I want to see the kitchen first. Yeah. But I don't know. That's just me. You know who's really good at doing that too? In in a different, we could probably name drop on here too, right? If it's in a good way. Yeah, if it's in a good way. Yes. So. Ali Buscemi is <gasps> so good. I can love Ali. She's her, amazing. Yeah, she's awesome, but she also like the stuff she does on Instagram. Oh, it's great. And she, super yeah. clever. All right, did you see her grocery store one? Yes, I was going to bring that <laughs> up. Like, and the Netflix, so you saw the Netflix one she posted too? <laughs> yes. Where, where, cause you know why? Because it's so relatable. I it was is. going through the same thing. And then yeah. on, a day later, I see her talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, shit, I'm smooching off my parents' account for yeah. the past decade. Like, right. Didn't even right. think of exactly. it, honestly. Oh, yeah. No, I still do it too. So funny. And like, that's when I've been seeing that like in my own stuff because I kind of took a little hiatus of posting like anything for a little bit because I was getting kind of burnt out of my own stuff and I kind of I went to the beach to be with my parents for last week and that was like a really good reset and so now I'm like coming in with all these new ideas and so since then I've been doing reels like super relatable reels so like me it was just me trying to make a video the other day I don't know if you've seen it yet but I was just trying to make a video and nothing was working that I couldn't make words for. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did see that. Nothing was working. And so since then, that's been getting like, that's one of my biggest videos now. We had that one, was it today or yesterday, where you were like bopping your pen back and forth and you're like, do you get like this when you match up the. That was today. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I do. yeah, when you match the tunes, like, yeah, and, and a lot of people are responding. And I'm like, okay, like, sure. relatable things are what people want. Yeah. But we go through such like weird trends, like sometimes, like, People, I mean, people always want relatable, but how you're doing it is different, I guess. But Allie does it, like, 
So great. I mean, the picture perfect, I would say how a real estate agent should, because she posts like deals, happy clients, all that stuff too, yep. like professional stuff. And then, mm -hmm. and then that, and uh, I guess, yeah. So it, for the sake of like making content, mm -hmm. it's the game, at least I've, since from when I kind of started doing this, I thought, oh, more views, more clients, more business, more, more better. You know, like mm -hmm. everything is better. Uh, and and ever since I've kind of been doing it, I'm like, and using Instagram to actually an effective way. Like for me, like when I as a loan officer, I you do this daily. I'm I'm constantly on Instagram on my professional account, going through and checking out what my realtors are doing and prospective realtors that I want to then work with. And I As can, yeah. So I'll do that. But like, <clears throat> if I make a piece of content, I used to want, want it to be like, Oh my God, I just got like a thousand views. Oh my God, that's insane. Mm -hmm. But like most of them could be out in California uh -huh. where that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter out there. I don't know. Like, for sure, like it's taken me like, I mean, I've, I've been doing my own business for this for almost a year now. And so, like, with that being said, I've kind of had a, a shift in the way I think about things. So, like, at first, I really wanted to go viral because who doesn't want to go viral? I hate that word. Right? It's terrible. I, I hate, hate it now. I hate that word. hate it now. If someone says that, I'm like, get out. It's such a cringy <laughs> word, too. It is. Also, it's, it's like, so relative. Like, what is viral? Is it 20,000 views, 100,000, a million? Like, yeah, what's viral what mean does to you? it mean? <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. I hate it. And Anyways, so, go ahead. like, when I, when I teach classes, I kind of ask that question, too. And I'm like, what's your goals? And a lot of people say, I want to get a ton of views on this one thing. So, like, so you want to go viral? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, why? So you can get people in a different country following your stuff who are never going to buy from you. Yeah. And then that messes up your algorithm because then you have all these bots and these fake people or even people that are not even relevant. And they're following you and they're messing up your algorithm because you want your algorithm to match, you know, the people that are here or the, your perspective people. And right. the people in other countries are not doing anything for you. It's going to show more people in their country your stuff. Yeah. And you get more followers that way. And it looks good, but then you get no actual, like, business from yeah. it. Yeah. The views and the follower accounts are good, but, mm -hmm. you know, minimal, I guess. That's, that's why I ask, like, that's why I ask, what's the ideal relationship we came back to us, look like with, with the <laughs> yeah. consumer? I think that's mm -hmm. just kind of where it all kind of boils down to, because there's a bunch of people that want to do that and mm -hmm. it's not helpful it's like would you rather have a million razor thin relationships or would you rather have a thousand relationships with people that you actually know and would call up and talk to now there would be a lot of people but you know yeah. or a hundred or five hundred we'll say mm -hmm. I'll take the smaller number of people that are directly in my community because then when you're posting and they see your stuff essentially again going back to kind of what I do and like use it for is or at least, at least used to because I've so inconsistently been doing it I feel <laughs> I've been posted in so long we're gonna make reels out of this and it's gonna be good but yeah, we are. Um, it's kind of like social media is almost like an email list you know what I mean mm -hmm. where you're putting out a piece of content and then it is and then it is got like <laughs> going out to the people that have subscribed to actually watch you and that's what you're posting it for not to like please the all-seeing eye algorithm yeah. another fucking word i absolutely hate mm -hmm. um it sucks <laughs> i get like you have to like do things that are to the guidelines of the platform and mm -hmm. also you taught me that there are hashtags that are banned that mm -hmm. you otherwise wouldn't think like they don't they're not, they don't have to be like swear words or something yeah, like valentine's day and miley cyrus miley cyrus was the one that i was gonna <laughs> yeah. bring up yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's the one i tell everyone and they're like what and i'm like well think Anytime anyone's ever made something risque is how it gets banned. Risque. Oh, yeah. Gets a little spicy with it. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, like I said the other, when I was teaching the other day, too, like, all you have to do is you have to be consistent with at least, at least three, two to three times a week. That's more than nothing. It's more than posting absolutely nothing. So that way when people are scrolling, they at least see you once a week. But you want to be posting two to three times a week and then... Um, engagement is another huge thing mm -hmm. right now. Like if you are not being authentic, like you're, you're just going to go down. So you have to go find people or even people on your feed and just comment authentically. Like, oh my God, like cool. Sure. Like, oh my God, you make a great point. Like actually make it look like you're engaging with their content. Yeah. You know, what's good too is 
how easy it is to take a post that someone has, send it to them with that little like mm-hmm. paper airplane icon. Yeah. And then just comment on, send a direct message to them to comment on their post. Yeah. So easy. It's amazing. And it makes them feel good and then it gets their stuff go up and then makes you go up too. Yeah. So it's kind of like it works in both ways. Because I'll sometimes send messages to agents that I haven't met before uh, about something or whatever. <clears throat> and then if they post something like, oh, I just sold this house or what, you know, mm-hmm. you know, happy closing or just got one under contract. I did it today with an agent actually who had been struggling to, you know, get a house under contract for whatever reason um, for like a good like month, maybe a month and a half. And then she finally did it and easily just within two seconds threw out the congrats and it yeah. gets that conversation like going. Because I feel like people aren't going to not respond to that. But I, I get also too that like I use it in a way that realtors and small businesses aren't going to use it. You know, you know what, what I mean? mean? But that's good though. I mean, so I mean, I get anywhere from like creepy messages to actually good messages like that. Like, oh, I love what you're creepy doing. Creepy messages? Oh my God. Really? I got a lot of creeps in there. They're just, oh, there's boy. actually another follower. She is in, I think she's in Ireland, but she has a pretty big following. And we're making like a fun post. It was her idea. I'm just doing it. But she's like, we're going to do a post of what not to do with your Instagram. And then it's just a compiled list of all these creepy messages that her and I both got in like from just weird people. And she's like, this is how you don't use your Instagram for your business. Because there's a lot of like weird people on there. And so a bunch of all the other social media managers around the world have all been in on it. So we've all been like compiling this list of them. What's on the list? What's on the list? Yeah. Oh my God. No, they're bad. Really? <laughs> There's one that's super bad. Well, I was going to ask you too, like what do people, what are, what are the biggest things that you see that people fail at doing or just need to improve at? I would, I would let's say, what do people fail at doing on, on, on their social media that they just are not doing correctly? Branding. Um, branding. Number one thing is branding. You would think that the whole point of doing it is, is branding. How, okay. Yeah. So on a scale of one to 10, how is my branding? Probably not very good. Probably not very good at all, actually. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you even have brand. <laughs> I don't think I do either. Really. So what, a one or a zero? I mean, out of what, 10? 10, yeah, one to 10. And out of 10, maybe like, I'll give you two. You're going to be nice and give me two. <laughs> Dude, I'll be nice. <laughs> okay, so explain to me then what, what I also like. So, yeah. you, I mean, you're, all right, so your branding is, there's so many things. So, their branding is, first off, a logo, like, very stereotypical logo. Um, colors, fonts, like you have to have three fonts. But what if you work for like a company? So like a you, big name company. Yeah, like Keller Williams. You okay. do a lot of work with Keller Williams. Yeah, agents. yeah. So Keller Williams is really cool with that. Yes, yeah. A lot of my agents I work with are KW agents. So and they just of, go on and because there's a lot of websites where you can just pull a free logo online and just mm-hmm. slap it on your. Where do you put it on your Instagram? You can't put it because wouldn't you want your like face there or for your business you're talking about? You just do that. Which part? <laughs> so. If you're a real estate agent, you're probably going to want your face, right? Yes, but. But you're not talking about for your icon or whatever. No, 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 no. So, okay. like, when you're just posting things, um, so let's say you're posting the market update. Oh, you mean, like, have it in your post. Oh, hell yeah, have it in your this post. This is how little I, uh, this is how much I need you. <laughs> it's okay, that's why I'm here. Yeah. But no, I mean, your face is your brand, too. So, I mean, like. Your face is very well known. So people know you because you're fucking Maparoni and you are the mortgage guy. Like people know that. And then of course I tell everyone my people too. So, but like your, your face is your brand. Your voice is your brand. How you talk is your brand. And then also like your little catchphrases are your, your voice or I'm sorry, your brand. And then like how you dress is your brand. Um, how you walk is your brand. Like there's so many things to it, but it, on Instagram, it's just how you're perceived and looked at. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, if like you're gonna wear the same, like I'm, I'm trying to think of my stuff because I'm all over the place. Like I'm mostly like up in a bun, chunky sweatshirt, just chilling in my room because that's where my office is. It's your brand. I would think so. Is that on brand? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I'm a little country, crun- country, crunchy granola a little bit. I have my Birkenstocks, hair up in a bun. Usually I have a flannel on. Like I like to be cozy. But then when I need to go actually teach and do stuff, like I'll dress up. Yeah. Or if I have my, like one of my, you know, my big client, like they're very, very well dressed, high money. So I also dress to my client. Like yeah. if I know my yeah. client is going to be expensive, I'm going to dress like I'm also expensive. Yeah. That's <clears> interesting <throat> that you throw that in branding as well. Cause it's, mm-hmm. And the fact that you said your voice is a part of your branding, your catchphrase is what you do. Because when I think of branding, I don't know. I think of like Lay's chips or Coca-Cola and (laughs) 
a lot like I'm sure colors have a big thing mm-hmm. to do with it. Are you is it like keep your colors very consistent on your profile? So yeah. is this all like profile stuff? Like what 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 can people do better at with branding? I'm like all trying right, so to just, ask a question. I don't even know. No, what no, I you're ask, good. So you know, I mean? you know my brand, right? You you're familiar with my brand. Yeah. Okay, so I'm pinks and a little bit of yeah. Neutrals. You have that like that color there. Yep. Yeah. If you ever look in the very background at any of my posts, there's marble, and then also I do neutral browns. So I kind of always have these colors on me at all times. Um, I'm just wearing blue today. What? I've never worn this shirt in my life. I was really excited about it, and also I have blue eyes. So it also brings out your blue eyes. But I also have a color shirt like this, but it also washes me out a little bit because I'm not tan enough right now. So, but it's just, it's just like all the like all the clothes I wear. Half, like they kind of match my brand in a way. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to be a total scumbag today, so I actually wore my hair down. <laughs> but like, I always have my hair up because I have so much hair. Just always winter. I'm sorry, summertime is always up. Winter time is always down. Um, as far as like the colors you're talking about, like going back to KW, their colors are red, gray, white, and black. Very typical. Yeah. Um, Compass, black and white. Uh, EXP. They are black and white, aren't they? They are. Why do I, I feel just, like they're like yellow or something too? Right, like right, I was gold. just putting their brand kit together for that team, and I was like, okay, what's the uh, like their tertiary color? And I'm like, gray. It's literally just black, white, and gray. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. And their brand guidelines are super strict. Nothing wrong with that because that's really? yeah, that just means like your brokerage is really strict on what they want you to do. But they're so clean and modern. <clears> at the they same are because they're expensive because they're luxury. And so, uh, if you want to ever come off as expensive, luxury, money, put a lot of space in your work. So, if you're making a graphic, you want a lot of open, empty space, and then clean lines, just like a line, and then white or black. I mean, have you you've seen Compass's stuff? Yeah. Yeah, their stuff is a lot of space, clean lines, it black is. and white. It is very spacious. That was a graphic design one on one in college. <laughs> Hmm. They're like, if you want to come off as expensive, just do as much empty space as possible. Really? And very simple wording. Just yep. not... I guess that's kind of true, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just look up like any like luxury thing. It's really cool. Why? Do you know why? It's just how our brains perceive rich. <laughs> it's, just, it's just literally how it works. I, I don't... I don't know the science behind it. I just know it works. And then when I see it, I'm like, yeah, like I think of money when I think of that. Because when you think of cluttered, there's Holy nothing in here that's very shit, cluttered. That but you think of true. something super cluttered, it makes you think cheap. Yeah, or like like a uh, even like a real estate agent's website that has like a whole bunch of different tabs and a whole bunch of different. Yeah. Or if they have oh, what something that drives me nuts that people do. So if you're listening, please fix it. Uh, if you have a graphic and it's just nothing but wor- or your website, nothing but words, and it's not broken up in any way by bullet points, it's just one big fat paragraph. Oh, a graphic like on on what a website on, on or social media or on a post like or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can't stand because I also have ADHD, so I'm like, you lost me after two seconds. What's an example of that of what you're talking about? Like what do a you mean? A lot of words on something. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know, like what you mean. But what instance do people do that typically that you find that you're like, Jesus, will you stop doing this? Ooh. Is it like a client referral sort of like this? So is, <clears throat> I've seen that a little bit of different ways. So a great example is one of my clients, and the reason I can say it's one of him because we actually fixed it. So when he was doing open house postings, um, <clears throat> he would have like the photos, say an open house, and then there would be a big fat paragraph of what it was. No, it's okay. Okay. I'm just, I was like, oh no. I did, I'm just checking. Um, so he would have a big fat paragraph just ex- putting too much information about the house? Yes. And so from that, I've redone his whole template. And then instead of putting all of it there, you put the open house details on that very first page and you put the details in the actual caption. Um, but then you can also make it a carousel post because a carousel post will po- show up at least, depending on how many, if you have at least five, let's say five slides in a carousel post. That gives at least three different chances for that post to show up on someone's feed as they're scrolling. Again? Yep. Yeah, I've noticed that where I see one and then I'll see the same post, but it's the second image of it now. Mm-hmm. And then I'll always go back to the first one and be like, I definitely saw this before. Yep, and that's what everyone does. And then, and then of course, the favorite word, the algorithm, it'll see that you're Hate it. back there. And it's like, oh, snap, like they're going back to it again. Like this must be a good post. And then that will put that post higher up on the totem pole. So carousel, if you're not going to do reels because you hate them for whatever reason, if you're not going to do those, at least do carousel posts because those get a watch time. 
Okay. Okay. Because the amount of time you're literally spending on it and scrolling back and forth, that's considered more time looking at it. Mm -hmm. So how do you come up with branding strategies with your clients? Is it mostly them? Do you say, hey, I see you as this? How does that work when you work with them? So um, let's see, like so the Keller Williams, any other agents that are like a big part of those, like they kind of already have it. But obviously as an agent, you want to establish your own brand. So some of them have already came to me with their own brand. Some of them I've like sat down with them in different sessions where I'm like, all right, um, also, it's part of my onboarding process. So um, on my on onboarding, I have forms that it's questionnaires. Like, all right, how would you explain your favorite piece of pizza? How would you explain showing a house here? How would you explain the favorite place in the world that you love to visit? Really random ass questions, but mainly it's because I want to hear how they're explaining it. Not here, but see. However, I want to hear and see how they're explaining it. So that way, when I start making their captions and all their copy, their, their writing, it sounds the most like them because... I'm portraying them, so I need to know how they sound. And again, going back to branding, like your voice is your brand. So how you explain things, I pick up on different words. So like I say cool beans all the time. Like so, I'll I'll put cool beans in some of my. You do say cool beans a lot. I do. I love cool beans. That and awesome sauce. Um, awesome sauce. <laughs> they're just so good. Um, but yeah, so and then if it comes down like they have no idea. So right now the wedding venue I'm working with, it's a brand new wedding venue. Uh, she just took it on. She's revamping the whole thing. So, like, working with her and her branding has been a long road because she wants to know, like, again, wedding venue has to seem richy. So you have to have really, like, really nice, clean things. So we've been, like, working on her color palette, her fonts, just those two alone. It sounds so simple, but there's so much to that because once you make it, like, that's it. And if you're going to remake it, you want to give it at least a year or two. Before you start changing it up again? Yeah. So That's like, a think long of Apple. Time. Apple only changes their their logo every few years. Yeah. And it's because they need the person to know what it looks like. Why would they? Why would what? they change it? I mean, it's Apple. It's just, I mean, I remember. It looks better than it did in the 90s, but <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another one. Um, oh, what's another one? Logos are, I mean, well, that doesn't really, I was going to say. X now Twitter, but that kind of doesn't even. That's a complete change mm -hmm. up. And what are those called, by the way? Like you can't what? send a tweet anymore. So what do you send an X? I don't. I, I'm writing a tweet. I honestly hate Twitter, so I don't really know. I don't really use it much either. I th I, I'm I'm trying to be on Threads more because that's like the newest thing. Okay, this is. I should have <laughs> oh, wrote wait. this down too. What the hell are Threads? <laughs> what are they? Because I see these weird numbers on everybody's uh, mm -hmm. thing now. Page. Yeah. What is it? It's just the in, it's the Twitter of Instagram, is what it is. Um, so okay. it's <laughs> so you have oh gosh like I haven't been on it in a minute but you have threads obviously so it's just you write a little status like oh god all right mine on my threads it's literally me forgetting it's I a have separate threads. app right it is it's a separate app it's part of Instagram okay it's part of Instagram and literally all my threads are like me saying oh shit I forgot I had it again. Like, every few weeks I come in, I'm like, oh, I forgot I had threads again. Threads, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, some people, I mean, it is, like, the grow, the fastest growing app right now because it is so new. But no one, not a lot of people are on it. Not, like, the right clientele aren't on it. You think it'll flop or you think it'll remain? Because they say if you delete your threads, then it deletes your entire Instagram account, right? That's what it says when you go so sign up for I it. I don't think it does. Because Adam no? Sorry, the owner of uh, Instagram, he did a whole... Because me and, like, everyone else who does what I do, like, we all follow Adam because he always comes out with these. Gives you the deets about the yes. social media platform. Yeah, and he did a whole thing about that and just ask, like, telling people, like, okay, like, it does not delete it. Don't quote me on it because I don't remember. It's been a few weeks since I read it. But... I'm going to directly quote you on it. We actually have this on <laughs> Actually, you're the reason right why now. Instagram got deleted. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, from what he says, I don't think it does. Um, it just puts, I don't remember, I have to go back and just look at it. Just does something or other. Yeah, but I mean, threads are like, okay. So it's, it's a more separate like a place app. for witty comments is what it is. Witty comments. So it's a separate app that you go to, to look at further posts within, deeper in a different social media platform. Kind of, it's just like, it's honestly, you go there to, if you just have like a fun idea in your head, or if you have something stupid to say, like you just go... Um, I forget what it's called. Thread it. You go. 
I really haven't been on. That kind that of is much. what Twitter is for. It's literally Twitter. Instagram and if is you more think of, formal. If post. you think of Instagram, Instagram just takes ideas from every single app. No, TikTok. sure they do. Yeah, stories. Reels did not come until. Oh yeah. TikTok. And then Instagram got uh, mm-hmm. uh, shorts. Yep. And then it got reels. And then YouTube got shorts. Yeah. Yeah. So all these places are just Snapchat. I mean, yeah. Stories. Uh, Be reels. Now I look at more Instagram stories than I do Snapchat. I do. I I much rather be on. So they're uh, trying to Instagram. make the social media platform where there's no need to do anything else. You got everything yep. you need right here. Yeah, because I mean, so Meta it has Instagram and Facebook now, and Facebook's more for like your groups, you know, your older demographic. Like they're all there. And though that demographic does not want to be on Instagram, and the ones on Instagram do not want to be on Facebook, so they have to keep both of them. If you think about it, the younger people like they don't really want to be on Facebook. And the older people, they definitely do not want to be on Instagram. I'm really never on Facebook, yeah. I'm only on it because I do all my um, events on there. That's where that's where Facebook comes in clutch. Yeah, very true, actually. You yeah. are, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are sending, like... I mean, that's how I got... So it's the very, very first event that I did. I had 30 people there, give or take 25, 30. But I did it through Facebook of, uh, groups. Because there's... Uh, so in Raleigh, we have, like, the Relocate to Raleigh, the Raleigh Networking, Women in Raleigh Networking... Uh, networking realtors at the triangle like there's so many networking groups and i just spammed all of them i'm like here you go like hopefully some of you can and since then i mean we went from 25 now to a, roughly 90 people 90 people showed up in the last one this very well the weather kind of crapped it out rained. on us there yeah, was 100 rain. people actually rsvp that were coming and i got messages from a ton because that weather was kind of bad but the one before that 90 people came yeah yeah. Well, you also started putting it on Eventbrite too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's helped. That's a good. That was a good. Uh... And then I actually just added it to my website because I have mm. some things in the work works for that. So, kind of dropping it on my website right now. Yeah. Because eventually it'll be a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. So Instagram is going to be the one app. Mm-hmm. YouTube. I mean. Are you doing anything with your clients on YouTube? Like, make you do you, you don't primarily like you don't make no. those. It's videos. only because I don't film. I mean, I just have my phone right now. I don't have it. I I have a camera, but I haven't touched. Do you think it you'll get years. a videographer one day, or is so that I partner it? with one. His name's Martin. 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 Yeah, You're Martin. Martin. Martin? <laughs> yeah, Martin. I know Martin. You know Martin. I left him hanging before your event the last time. I'm actually he wanted to wow. he wanted to yeah I know I he wanted to meet before. I said, hey, let's meet before the meet and mingle, and then I, <laughs> and then I you didn't show wasn't up. <laughs> able to show up. Yeah, and I completely forgot about it. I didn't put it on my calendar. If I don't put it on my calendar, because I don't remember well, put anything. put the next one on your calendar. I don't remember anything. Yeah, I feel so bad. I messaged him after he didn't respond. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. No, so I got to reach back out to Martin. I think him and I are meeting um, He wanted to talk about the podcast. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, so him and I are talking about, um, he's helping me, he wants to help me video my stuff. Because yeah. I don't video it myself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be a great partnership for you guys. Mm-hmm. So now I'm. So him and I now collaborate. So anytime I have a client that needs like really nice stuff, I'm like, yeah, guy, guy. Yeah. Because I don't. First off, I don't have time to do that. I don't want to do it. I rather give that to the professional and have it come out really good, mm-hmm. and then they get awesome things, and we can break it up into a bunch of different clips and make a bunch of different content out of it. Right. 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 Because right. like him and I have talked, and like we've talked about like doing B rolls, so that way I can take that and turn it into more reels. B-rolls, mm-hmm. background. What's B-roll stand for? Why do they call it B-roll? You have no idea. Is that like <laughs> I don't when know you were why it's to, called B-roll, you but going, I know you have your A-roll and your B-roll. That's like when you went to, to carry. It's like shots that you put clean, cumulatively together to like make a... Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So that was kind of all B-roll. or like So the A-roll would literally be like this, taking video of us. Oh, okay. And so say I started saying like, yeah, we went to the waterfall and it was really great and felt really ice cold like as i'm saying waterfall it would pan it's kind of like family guy ah. it pans too and then b-roll. it shows you the waterfall yeah that's the b-roll yeah <laughs> god yeah no b-roll's great i mean i love it and like even like simple little things like i tell people like at the reels workshop i told people I'm like you are overthinking it and i had a whole slide about everything they're overthinking and what they can do simpler what are they overthinking how to do a reel they think it has to be this intricate, elaborate, crazy thing. Most of the the best ones are four seconds long, and mm-hmm. again, I don't know. Just like if you saw stuff. one of my last ones, I was at um, in Myrtle Beach. There's the uh, Brook Green Gardens, and there was a butterfly flying, fluttering around a little flower, and I literally just filmed it fluttering around a flower, and that was my last one of my last reels. And I was just telling people, oh, and I did it in slow mo. And so I tell people, and I'm like, yeah, make sure you're, like, you're taking a minute to 
you know, take time for you, slow down. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also like an advocate for, you know, mental health too. So I try to bring that into my, my uh, Instagram. Yeah. And so that was literally a four to five second video of a butterfly. So it's like, so for 9-11, 9-11's coming up, perfect time. So if you just go out and you film a flag flying and then put that as the background of your reel and then put words on the front that says, you know, in memory happy of 9-11. Definitely not happy 9-11. <laughs> you know, in I memory can, of, you know, whoever, and right, then just have right, the right. music going. Super, super easy reel. Yeah. Get some trending audio on there. You're going to be good to go. What else do people do do wrong with reels that you see? I don't know if I see them do it wrong. I, just, I mean, I see a lot of what people do not better? doing it. What do, yeah, what are they not doing? And so, like, a lot of people are also saying, they're like, um, like, a lot of questions I got the other day, they're just like, well, we don't know, like, what music to choose, or we don't want to show our face, or I'm not, I have nothing interesting about me. And I'm like, all right, give me a sentence of what you do. And she's like, well, you know, I'm a realtor at the beach and I specialize in what was it I specialize in new houses um, with veterans or something like that and I'm like cool you just gave me a lot in that sentence you live at the beach you're a realtor at the beach you work with veterans you work with new houses okay so in those four things where at the beach do you live where do you like the most at the beach so I have a rule of three so whatever you say I'm gonna break it down into sections and have three segments so you live at the beach uh, give me your favorite spot at the beach, your favorite place to eat at the beach, how long you lived at the beach, like your story, because you always have to bring a personal element. So there's that. And then you said um, you work with veterans. Is there a special program you work with? Because there is such a thing called Homes for Heroes, and that's like a veterans first responders thing. So like, are you part of a program? Do you have someone in your family that's a veteran, and that's why you work with them? Um, how many veterans have you helped? What's the special rate you can get them? What's VA loans that you can get them? What's a mortgage place that you work with? And that's like a bunch of shout outs. And then you get what I'm saying though. Yeah. You can just break it down to threes. Yeah. And so when you try and tell people like, all right, just write down a sentence. So this is actually part of my workshop I do with them. I have them write down a sentence and then we spend the whole time breaking it down and then breaking that down more and more and more. And I'm like, so everything you just wrote down, that could be content. So. Say that sentence had just like 15 things in it. That's 15 days of content. That could be reels, it could be carousels, it could be static posts. It could just be a photo of you explaining something. Like people don't realize how easy it is to make content. They just think they have no content to have. Yeah. Like this girl. Oh, the the girl who said she has nothing cool about her. This girl had the biggest hair I've ever seen in my life. Like crazy curly, beautiful hair. And I was like, Well, you're my age. How do you? How do you do your hair? And she's like, oh my God, I have a whole routine. I'm like, okay, well, you should probably film that because I guarantee you everyone that looks at you has the same exact question. And in that time, I asked everyone, I'm like, who loves her hair? Almost everyone like raised their hand. I'm like, cool. Which of you that actually have curly hair would actually like to have that hair? And then ones who had curly hair all rose their hand. I'm like, cool. Would you watch her stuff to learn how she did that? All of them raised their hand. I'm like, cool. There's a little segment for you because you don't need to be screaming from the rooftops. You're a real estate agent. Just talk about you and what you like to do and people will follow. Because your Instagram is your portfolio. Your Instagram is literally your portfolio for people to learn who you are without them meeting you yet. Yeah. So they already know you're Holy a real shit, estate that agent. Was great. <laughs> they, like that they already, was great. They already know you're a real estate agent. So show them anything else about you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just a good wholesome thing too, yeah. you know. Sorry, I get like on a little like rants about it because like. <laughs> no, I like it because I feel but, like yeah. the way you do it is is um, the way it should be done, which is just very a very like I don't know if holistic is the is the right word, but it's just very like you're doing it in, in a way that is personal to the person, mm-hmm. and you're not trying to go viral. You're just doing your thing, and if people watch it, awesome. Exactly. And if they don't, they can keep scrolling. Well, it's probably it's probably easier to be consistent doing that too. Mm-hmm. Quality over quantity. Quality over quantity, and yet you're like three to four times a week. So do you? I'm have, on my stories all the time. Oh. I don't know if you see my stories. I always have that ring full. Yeah, the I'm ring is important. <laughs> also, I love it too because like I know who. Again, as a, as a, like a networking tool that I use it for, I always know who's been who is active on this app. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I know that I'm not reaching out to somebody that hasn't used this thing in two years. Yeah. 
So that's always a very important thing too. Also, it just looks cleaner. Mm-hmm. I hate when my thing doesn't have a ring around it. It feels Same. dirty. I know. I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Weird that I haven't thought about it. Because I, I also, I do a ton of local shout Again, going back to my mission of supporting local, I do a ton of local shout outs. Like when I first started, just, I, I think this was before I actually knew you, um, but I really wanted um, to get my name out there somehow. So I did a thing called Wake Up Wednesday and I had someone, anyone, sponsor it's right when i first started too so i was like anybody please just help me get my name out there and i had people sponsor five dollars to me they paid me five dollars and i go to any coffee shop or somewhere to get a drink and i would talk about the aesthetic of the place what i got what i liked about it and then i talked about the person that sponsored me and did a whole write-up on them and i posted it and then they would share it or i would sorry i'd post it and then they both so the business and the person that sponsored me would share it so i got double exposure and then people are like, oh my God, like I want to try that out. And then engagement, of course, you want to get people asking questions. So then people are like writing all these comments and asking, you know, it was really cool. That's actually how I started to get my name out there. Yeah. That's a very good idea. It was so much fun. But everything you're doing is not trying to, again, like please the algorithm. Like everyone, yeah. I feel like there's so many people that's trying to, they're, they're trying to do that. And I'm like, oh my God, that's such a... That's such an exhausting way of thinking about that. Yeah. And like my newest... I've been trying to figure out, like, you know, my say, because I don't have an actual saying for myself yet, but I know I do everything okay. organically, and I do everything authentically. Yeah. And if it doesn't fit the norm, then I know, I'm not a person that fits the norm, so. No, you're not. And I think that's a very good thing in this space, too, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. And the, the, big, the biggest thing is they want to see people being unique, because normal is boring. But. I guess. <laughs> If I'm seeing everyone do the same thing over and over, it's just like a snore fest and I'm just going to keep scrolling. But if I see someone doing something really cool I've never seen, I'm like, ooh, ooh, that's cool. Like, I didn't even know anyone played chess on TikTok until I saw you do it. Oh, yeah. And then I saw a lot of other people doing it afterwards, but like, I never even saw a person doing it. Oh, yeah. I started the whole thing. You did. (laughs) No, that was fun. I mean, that was that was a fun thing to do. That um, was so much fun to watch. And I don't know why. I like yeah. I like watching people play video games too. So like watching that, I was like, this yeah. is actually kind of fun. I would get a lot of people who would watch me. At the end of a thing, like a two hour thing, so I'd have 40,000 people like in and out watching the yeah. stream. It was crazy. I was like, wow, this is awesome. I have like 5,500 followers on TikTok now too, but I, I don't think I can be very consistent with it. Um, I haven't done it in a couple, I think at least a couple weeks. And also, it's people been are a so. Damn, huh? I feel like it's been a couple months. No, no, no. I did it. I did it fairly recently. I went on and just did one, oh. and um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's cool, but it's like it's. I'm not. I don't really want to do that, and yeah. it doesn't really fit because I don't want to do. I don't want to ch- stream chess. I want to put <laughs> my real estate stuff out there yeah. and loan stuff, mm-hmm. and I don't want to. I don't know. I figured when I was using, it, I was like, oh, I can lure people in. <laughs> You can make a game out of it. A game out of what? Okay, so in the BNI, man, we, um, the bookkeeper, I think you met, maybe, I don't remember if you met her, but she, like, and she knows it, like, so have you ever been to a BNI? No. Okay, so at a BNI, you have a 10 minute, uh, segment. So whoever's a presenter has 10 minutes to talk about whatever it is they do. And every week it's a different presenter. So last week it was the bookkeeper. And she's like one of my good friends. She goes, I know this shit is boring as hell. So she made a game out of it. So she made a family feud out of it. It was so much fun. So the whole thing, we all, we all broke up in teams and she had the questions and like we all had to answer like, you know, bookkeeping for your business kind of questions. And all of us had no idea any of it, mm-hmm. but it was just fun. And so you can always like make it a game. On, I don't know how you make it a game, but you can somehow make it a game on there. So then it gets people in there. Yeah. I guess I don't there know. There is a way you have to have fun because mortgages are not the most fun. For no, they're people. not. They're they're. I mean, even <laughs> when I was doing mortgage videos, I was extremely bored even like doing them. I mean, mm-hmm. I actually really like making the videos and like editing them. It's fun for me. Mm-hmm. That's why I like doing my house videos. Yeah, I had a great you're time. With amazing. It. At it. When I would throw those up, oh my god, I love. Mm-hmm. I would. I would. When I would match it to a song, and I was like, this just fits so well. Yeah. I love that. It was so much fun, but I can't do it consistently because that means once a week I gotta pop out to some house, model home somewhere, and spend an hour to an hour and a half or whatever, run around the house and like filming it. And I'm like, that's I can't keep doing that, and mm-hmm. I, don't know, I just feel like I can't keep doing it with 
Maybe I could figure something out with the streaming on TikTok because that was fun to do. People are mm-hmm. extremely negative on there, though. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, that's that's another thing is I can't. I know I personally would not be able to handle the negativity. <laughs> that's why I'm also cool, like not gabbing a bunch of people right now. Yeah, I don't know, but, it, but it just goes against like. And actually, was getting a lot of people who were like around this area too. There were people. Yeah. There was one guy who was like, "Hey, I'm buying in Virginia." Or one person was like, "I'm buying in Fuquay." There's another one who's like, "Hey, I'm a real estate agent in Charlotte." I was like, "Oh, this is this is kind of like cool." Here, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, but it goes it, again. It goes t- again towards the like, do I want a whole bunch of followers? Do I do, do I really want to solidify relationships in my local market mm-hmm. with the, the things that I'm doing here right now? And I don't really know where that whole chess thing fits in. So I just haven't been doing it. And I want to get back to the podcast, doing that more because that directly does that exact thing. Yeah. That's where you just need to write down like what your goals are and then from there make the game plan. I need a social media manager to help me. You should probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing this for 55 minutes here, Kaylee. Oh, wow. It's been fun. I'm not going to take up any more of your time, but I am because we're going to go get a couple beers and Hell, food yes. <laughs> on my, my favorite place you know, on Salem Street in Apex. Oh, so but before good. we do, before we say sayonara to the people who are listening, Kaylee, why don't you tell the people what you got going on next and how they can contact you? Oh gosh, what do I have going on next? So my next meet and mingle networking for professionals is on 9-11. And even though it is on September 11th, we are raising money for the first responders of 9-11. It's for the FDNY Foundation. Wow. And so... Because I normally have it on the first Monday of every month, uh, the first Monday of September is Labor Day, so we couldn't do it that way. So the next one is 9-11. And so I couldn't push off another week because I have another event the following Monday. So because of that, I figured I'd take a little bit of a negative and turn it to a positive, and so I'm raising money for it. Mm-hmm. So we will be doing that. I have Green Home Solutions as my sponsor. Martin will be doing their, being there with the photography again. Um, and then after that, I have a educational seminar the following week on the 18th at the same place. At Bond Brothers? Uh, sorry, yeah, at Bond Brothers. Okay. But the, this time, that both of those events is at the other location that they have, which is a music venue. So if it's 150 people in there, we will be the only ones there. Wow. We'll have our own personal bartender and everything. I'm so excited. When is that? September 11th. Oh, so that is, that's the meat mingle. That's the meat mingle. I thought you were talking about a different one. No, so the following week is an educational networking. That's event. okay. That's, yep. I thought you were talking about that. Okay. Yep. So that's with Tom. Okay, okay. Wow. Yep. And so, no, it's gonna be really exciting. I've been so you're trying. doing a thing with Tom. Awesome. Yep. So he, yeah, he, him, and I and Becca have all been working together, and then my one year anniversary slash the grand opening officially of my business will be October first at Bond Brothers. Wow. Which I'm so excited. That'd be cool. No, it's weird. It's already been a year. Yeah. Because I was do- so I'm already ahead looking at next month's content for people in the holidays, and I saw that National Coffee Day is on September 29th, which means there's free coffee everywhere on September 29th, and that's when I made my first post last year. Really? Because mm-hmm. I did I did a uh, I looked to see who's all giving away free coffee, and I made a whole post about it. Be like, all right, here's everywhere you can get free coffee. Oh, I'm doing it again though too, <laughs> except I'm making a reel out of it this time. Love it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so the networking is coming up, and other than that, where what's your what's, what's the name it? of your business? How can people find you on social? Oh, yeah. on social what, media? Who, who <laughs> I? I suck at this part. <laughs> even even <laughs> Allie during the first workshop, she was like, "So, uh, Kaylee, how do people contact you?" <laughs> they can't. I'm uncontactable. Oh, and this workshop, I wish you were there for because I had a whole slide at the end that explained who I was so I could remember it. Oh, yeah? I don't have slides here. This, this is why I'm not That's doing great. it. That's great. Anyways, I am Kaylee Bain with Breezy Digital. And how can you find me? You can find me on all socials at Breezy Digital. So it's B-R-E-E-Z-E-E Digital. Oh. That's how you find me everywhere. BreezyDigital.com, Facebook, Instagram. You can find me on threads, but I won't really be there. On threads? Yeah. You won't find me on threads. You won't find me. Oh, and then on TikTok, I'm K the Wino. K the Wino? Yes. I just haven't changed it over to Breezy Digital yet. Gotcha. But yes, you can find me being very stupid over there because I have no shame in anything I'm doing. I'm going to have to look at that now. I don't think I've seen it. My TikTok? I don't think I've even... I might have. I don't... I don't know. We may have dug deep enough. I, I remember know. I commented one thing on your little chest thing and someone was like, who is that? And we're like... Bro, chill. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. It was funny, though. 
But now, Kay the Wino, I give some kind of tips and tricks over there, but TikTok's more like the funny side. And I mean, Instagram's funny too. Yeah. Instagram is a big one, I feel like. Yeah, Instagram is where I thrive. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much, Kaylee. Thanks let's for go. having me. Go. Oh, this yeah. was fun. Well, we'll do it again soon at some point, too. Yes. And um, then I'll have you on my podcast when I actually get that up again. You'll going. have to once you, actually <laughs> po- once you post an episode. Yeah. Yep. Once I post the first... You'll be my first episode. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right, boom. All right, cool. All right, be there. All right, thanks a lot, Kaylee. And thank you to everybody who's listening now to the yes. Weekend Paycheck Podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Peace.